what's the difference between a long note and a short note? Well, very often we think it has to do with the tonguing or with the articulation. Well, articulation is the length of the note. Tonguing is the way you let it speak in the beginning. So you can do a soft tonguing or a hard tonguing or no tonguing at all. And there's a huge variety of different tongues that you can use, particularly in Baroque music. It is very famous. If you look at the books of Quanz, for instance, there's a variety of articulation between tu 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 and diddle 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 loo. There's a lot of various kind of possibilities to use the tongue for the different beginnings of the notes. With the tonguing, you shape the beginning of the note. That's all what you're doing. Now, the articulation is how long and how related each note is to the previous one and to the next one. And this has to do with the air, nothing to do with the tongue. The tongue is just precising the beginning of the note, but the difference between a long note and a short, short note is when you stop sending the air. A long note, you fill the whole length with air until the next note. Whether you use a tonguing or not, then it's going to be staccato, separated, or legato. But staccato doesn't necessarily mean short. Yeah, it means detaché, separated. Separated means articulated. Now, we have the possibility to use very short notes up to very long notes. When a composer writes a quarter note with a dot on the top, that means it's a short quarter note, but still longer than an eighth note. Otherwise, he would have been writing an eighth note. Same thing again. When we have an eighth note with a dot on top of it, the composer has been wanting a short eighth note, so it's not a full length eighth note, but it's longer than a sixteenth note, which is the next value, etc., etc. It goes on like that. So, again, the articulation is what you do with the air, how you support the airstream with the air, and how much bouncing there is there. So, imagine that the tongue is just surfing on top of that airstream. Tam, 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 tam. When you play. What is happening is there's a little tonguing, very little, very subtle, so that the beginning of each note is precise, just like this drumstick on the drum. Tum, ta -ta -tum, ta -ta -tum. But then we have to release tam. See, I'm saying tam. There's a resonance, the resonance of the drums, the resonance of the flute player. Tang, ta -ta -ta -tang, ta -ta -ta -tang, tang. Something vibrant about the note. If we just the sound is going to be dead, and it's only going to be. This is only tongue, hard tonguing with no sound. This is not what we want. What we want is sound. So when we're using the tongue, first thing that we have to think of is the air. Breathe before that, and then use as much tongue as possible. Otherwise, it's not going to work. When we play very fast bits, like, again, Cacciatore in Concerto. Etc. It's important not to use too strong. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck. The strongest the, the tongue is hitting the teeth here in the front on their backside, the more it's going to be in the way of the air. Therefore, when you have a very fast bit, don't use too much tongue, because the more motion you get with the tongue, the slower the whole thing is going to get. You can use this only when you have very slow, a very slow pace, like... See, if I use the same tonguing in the second phrase, that's it's not going to be working. One is fortissimo, the other one is mezzo forte. If you play too strong with the tongue, it's not going to work in that speed. It's very important to keep the tonguing minimum, the motion of the tongue at the minimum possible amount so that the airstream is undisturbed because the air is producing, the airflow is producing the sound on the, on the flute. Now, when you want a tongue in the lower range, like chandolinos or cacciatore in concerto in the beginning, or
for these notes in the low range, you have to think something about the air first thing, about the air stream. If you use too much pressure and squeeze the lips and, tuk, 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 and try to hold the notes as tight as you can, then it's not going to work. In order to achieve big sound in the lower range, we have to let the air stream flow. The more we squeeze, the higher the pressure of the air, and the higher the pressure, it's going to go up to the second or to the next or to the third octave. So if we squeeze too much, it's going to be... Even though I'm fingering the lower octave, if I squeeze the lips, it's going to sound in the second octave because the air pressure is not suited to the lower octave. We have to relax as much as we can. And when we play... Whether we're playing... Or... Staccato or legato, the air stream, in order to make the biggest sound possible, should be very close and very similar. It's just that we finish the notes. We lift them up. But when we play the notes, we go as low and as open as possible. Again, when we breathe, we take the air into our body like a reservoir or like a balloon. And with this amount of air, we can produce it. It's just by releasing it that it's going to come out. It's not by squeezing it that it's going to come out. And this is where most of us flute players make a fundamental mistake by trying to shape and to control the tone when they want to play louder with the lips and again by doing this you only increase the pressure therefore it's going to go to the move to the next harmonic or to the next octave but it's not going to get any louder we have to let the air flow as freely as possible and with a nice natural open embouchure here and position on the lips. Now the flute is going to sound as it, at it, as it best and as loud as we can in this lower range. For that, no need to squeeze the lips. The sound is going to go empty in the lower octave and it's going to move up to one octave higher because we use the same fingerings, so it's moving to the next harmonic. This is what's happening when we're using the lips in a way to play crescendo instead of using the air. Remember, it's a wind instrument, it's not a lip instrument. <laughs> 